to complete the process and uh, be eligible to get the district grants. Before I get into the technical nitty gritty of how to apply for district grants online, I thought it would be worthwhile to briefly uh, refresh everyone and recap uh, some of the main policy guidelines uh, for the district grants for the upcoming year, 2019-20. So I have a brief uh, PowerPoint presentation and I'll just go through that to refresh everyone's mind. Um, Firstly, what kind of projects are eligible for district grants? Uh, the policy is very flexible, uh, both from the point of view of Rotary International and our own district. Almost any project which meets the need of your community is a social service project, either locally or anywhere else, uh, including internationally. It would qualify uh, for the grant. Uh, the project does not have to be limited to the six areas of focus, so it could be almost in any field. There is no minimum budget requirement. Uh, we understand it's a short-term impact uh, project. Uh, you can support scholars also for any level of study, whether locally or internationally. So really speaking, there is only one thing which district and RI is looking for, and that is whatever project you apply for, there should be some hands-on involvement of your Rotarian members. Uh, so what we are saying here is that it should not be just limited to say, uh, writing a check uh, to buy an equipment uh, for some organization, uh, but something where your members do get involved, they visit the organization, and there is, uh, uh, there is a visible impact in the name of Rotary on uh, the local community through your project. So that's just about the only requirement we are looking for. Uh, in addition, our district, of course, uh, qualifies the clubs uh, only if one of the members of the club have attended uh, a grant training, uh, you know, either through a grant seminar, which we do once a year or at the PETS. Uh, in order to get reimbursement of the grant amount, uh, each club must have entered at least three goals in Rotary Club Central relating to membership, annual giving, or polio. And finally, uh, before the district sends out the check for district grant, your club must be current with the district dues. So that's about uh, all the requirements for the grants. Uh, let's just go through uh, what is the amount of the grant each club is eligible for. Uh, our district will give $500 to every club who applies for a district grant has a, and has plans to do an eligible project. No match required for this $500. So we are certainly hoping that every club in our district will apply for it. Uh, you can get additional $500 as long as the club matches one to one, uh, subject to a maximum of additional 500. So what it means is that you, your club can get a maximum grant of $1,000 uh, if the project is for $1,500 and your club is contributing 500. So the formula would then work out that you will get from the district $1,000. Now, of course, the final amount which you get may vary from this because finally, uh, finally, how much every club gets will depend upon how many clubs apply and how much they apply for. Uh, in our grant allocation for the next year, we have about $66,000, uh, but the actual amount will depend upon how many clubs apply. There is only one grant per club, uh, but going into the next year, uh, there are two exceptions, and that is for a satellite club and Rotaract club. And uh, let me now cover these two exceptions. If your club has uh, is sponsored a satellite club, you can apply a separate grant in the name of that satellite club, uh, in addition to your own club. Same way, if your club has sponsored a Rotaract club, uh, you can apply for another grant for Rotaract club. Uh, as long as uh, the, the Rotarians and Rotaract both are participating. And 
this policy just to clarify is only for rotary club it does not extend to interact or early act clubs in both these cases uh, whether it is for satellite or rotary act the sponsoring rotary club will have to be uh, responsible for submitting applications final reports and the money will pass through uh, the rotary club and they have the basic responsibility for implementation of the project uh, I still sometimes get questions from the clubs in terms of how the formula for grant works. So just again, put together, I have shown this earlier also in grant seminar, three examples. If your project cost is 500, you get full money from district, zero uh, contribution by club. If your project is for $1,000, the club should contribute 250 so that you can get 750 from the district 500 plus a match of 250 and same way for a project of 1500 you can get a district grant of thousand dollars some deadlines uh, it's a application is a two-step process first you have an initial application uh, which is due by july 15 latest and once uh, the district has reviewed your project will almost on the same day come back to you your project is good looks good please submit full application and then that full application and your budget details you have to submit by end july 2019 uh, we will then submit all these applications to ri for their approval sometime in august and we will get back to each club individually uh, the approval and the approved grant amount by latest by august 31 but it may be earlier once it is approved, then you can complete your project anytime, um, as soon as uh, you are ready. Uh, collect all the documents, receipts, pictures, other supporting documents, and then submit your final report uh, to claim the uh, district grant latest by April 15, 2020. But of course, you do not have to wait for that date. Uh, as soon as your project is complete, uh, the, the district website is open for receiving uh, final grant uh, report and the money will be reimbursed to you as soon as you submit the final report. Um, for the next year, 2019-20, 78 clubs are qualified in our district. I will just mention five clubs which are not qualified. Uh, they are Belleville, Chatham, Hackettstown, south Amboy and white house if any of these clubs are listening today uh, they can separately contact either mike hart or me and we obviously can discuss as to why uh, that particular club is not qualified and what can be done about it but if your name was not one of these five clubs that means your club is already qualified so you don't have to worry about the qualification process Again, recap of deadlines, July 15 for initial application, July 31 for full application. We will advise approval August 31 and final reports due uh, by April 15. Uh, that completes my initial introduction in terms of the basic policy. And uh, we can now go into the technical part of how to apply for district grants online. I'll just go through step by step. Uh, the whole process, uh, the initial application process probably is no more than five, seven minutes for each club and the full application probably 10 to 15 minutes. So it's not a very long process once it is clear to you. So I am opening here the district website page. Uh, Let me just see here. I will start right from the beginning, perhaps. This is a district website page. Uh, in order to apply for the grants, you have to log in uh, to the district website. So you have your password and your login name. So I'm just going to log in in my own name and uh, just one second. So I'm logging in to district website now. 
okay once you log in you will see on the uh, top right hand side uh, my name comes in there uh, in the center is member area uh, click on member area now you are on the district uh, uh, administration page there is a horizontal line uh, menu line and in the top menu line you have the third entry as grants so click on grants and as soon as you click on grant there will be a sub menu down below submit a grant request my club grants and district grants so when you are ready to uh, submit your initial application click on submit a grant request Okay, so now the page has opened up where you have to submit your initial uh, application. Um, I'll just use uh, a dummy application for my own club uh, so as to go through the process. So let's say I'm applying for my club, New Brunswick Club, and uh, my project is uh, a simple project, uh, dictionary project. So I just fill in the project name, then you go to the select year and as you click on this, there will be a top down menu and you click on the next year, 2019-20. When you do that, uh, another dialog box will open up, two dialog box, a sponsoring club. Click on this and you have a top down menu. So I'm going to select uh, uh, New Brunswick Club. As soon as you select your club under the contact name, uh, the names of your peop of your club people who are qualified to apply, they will show up. So if you click on that right now, I am the only one qualified to apply for my club. So that's the only name. But for your club, when you click you, uh, on your, uh, once you have reached your own club name, then do click on this. And if the person who is applying, uh, he or she doesn't find uh, uh, his or her name, uh, as a contact person, uh, then you cannot proceed further. So either you have to ask uh, someone else who is already qualified because they attended the uh, grant seminar or the PETS uh, training, but still, uh, if you have designated someone else and you want that name to appear, then do contact me. I have the authority to then put that name and authorize that person to apply. So in that case, you have to send me an email or call me and I'll be happy to add that name. So you have then country, state, New Jersey. This will all be showing up for your club. You don't have to do anything here. And here you just write uh, the short description of the project. So I can write uh, uh, to distribute dictionaries to third graders in 13 schools and i can say whatever area new brunswick highland park whatever so i gave and, uh, and described them what our club members will do so i could have added here our club members will go and uh, personally distribute the dictionaries talk to the student so particularly highlight active involvement of the rotarian members so that we are clear when we get this application that this is a hands-on project Estimated budget, let's say our budget will cost $1,000. I put $1,000 and that's it. Uh, your initial application is done, doesn't take more than five minutes. You then click on this uh, right hand side, there is a yellow button, submit. So I'm now submitting this application. Okay, now as soon as I submit, uh, you will get a message by email, uh, whosoever is the contact person. Uh, that your application has been received by the district. They are reviewing it and they will soon come back to you whether you should go ahead and proceed with the uh, full application. So after this, you will get, uh, I, I review these initial applications. I just try to see that, you know, the project basically looks good. Uh, Rotary members are involved in this. And then I will come back and say, yes, your project is good. Please go ahead and uh, uh, submit the full application.
So you will get then second email to submit your full application. Once you get that email, uh, then you again go log in to the district website, again the same page. And when you come to that page, this time, instead of submitting grant request, you go and say my club grants. So I am now clicking on my club grants. And when I go on my club grants, it will show all the applications. In fact, I have already submitted two applications for next year. But what you see, initial request submitted in the top, that's the one which I just submitted uh, as an initial request. So you go on to that, click on. So I'm clicking on that dictionary project. And uh, now you have, uh, you have this page before you, you will have. Uh, and in this page, there is a menu in the middle of the page uh, details, application, and budget. So for the purpose of completing your full application, you need to complete these two sections. Uh, so I'm clicking on now application. So another page will appear. Application. And in this application, there are now total one, two, three, four, five, five questions which you have to answer. General description, uh, describe the project. Here you click on the edit and then write in your general description. Again, what you gave in your initial application plus if you want to add something more. So I'll again just write one sentence to distribute dictionaries to third graders, write whatever, obviously it has to be uh, much longer than that, but for the sake of time, I'm just doing a short version here. And then when you go to the bottom of this uh, edit page, you will see this yellow button save. Uh, it's important that after you have done your project description, then you click on this save, because otherwise if you go to the next question without doing the save, your whatever you are typed in will be lost. So I'm now saying save. Okay, so now we again are on the same page, general description page. So whatever I had written, it is already saved now to distribute dictionaries to third graders. Then you go and answer the second question, community assessment in, in impact. I again put, click on edit. Uh, you can again say, how would it benefit the community? I can say, it will help improve reading skills of the students. So whatever you wish to say, you can add here. And after saying that, again, save this. So you have now saved the second part, community assessment and impact. If you open, you will see it is already saved. It will help improve reading skills, sustainability. So these are all five questions which you need to answer, which you already know what answers are there. Uh, cooperating organization, open this. You can again click on edit. Uh, here you can say who is the cooperating organization. I, I can say here 13. elementary schools in New Brunswick and Highland Park area. Again, go to the bottom, save. All right, so basically answer all these five questions, including implementation plan, where you can say, yes, our members uh, after ordering the dictionaries, we'll go individually to each of the schools, meet the teachers, meet the students, uh, distribute personally, and again, save it. And once you have done all that, uh, then this portion of the application is complete. Uh, then you can click on down below here at the go back. And 
and then you are again at the dictionary project page we have reached there uh, but there is one more section we have to complete so i am again clicking on dictionary project now we have completed the application portion and now we need to do our budgeting so i am now clicking on the budget okay so you go down below budget there are two sections to the budget one is expected expenses and the other is uh, your income portion so under expected expenses you want to uh, show uh, where will the money be spent uh, put here uh, click here on add a budget item so i'm clicking on that okay now this description of our project was or description of the cost item is uh, cost of dictionaries that's the expense item uh, supplier if you have a supplier's name add it over here uh, then put the amount so our budget was thousand dollars so i'm just saying we will spend thousand dollars in the dictionaries um, uh, no local tax involved uh, make sure the uh, bottom figure also shows one thousand uh, dollars which is showing it is currency is us dollars here and then click on the right side create okay so now if you go on the budget page so you will see under expected expenses what we added the item it is now being shown here as cost of dictionaries thousand dollars no tax total one thousand so it's pretty much done now there may be some projects where you have several items of expenses maybe you buy some supplies some food uh, maybe there is some transportation expense or delivery expense so then you create two three separate uh, uh, line items by each time going and clicking on add a budget item so that the total of those line items comes to whatever is the uh, total budget uh, for your project so having now filled up the cost side now we need to uh, fill up how will we finance that one thousand dollars <coughs> so now i go to the add project financing so if my budget is here thousand dollars i know that i can get maximum 750 dollars from the district and our club will have to contribute 250 dollars so i would here put it as club contribution uh, funding source here also i will click on club uh, i can I'll click here $250, uh, US 250, uh, our club will give, and here then go on the right hand side and click on add. And now if you will go to the budget page again, uh, expected income, so you now see club contribution $250 is now being shown up. But we need to add up this thousand and this item because we need to show how the total one thousand come. So we again go and click on project financing, and you again can create another source of income. Here I can simply click on district grant, and I'll put here district grant amount as seven fifty. I'll say add. and we are back to the budget page and now you will see under expected income we had earlier created one item club contribution 250 district grant 750 uh, we have total one thousand dollars so now our expenses and income they match and we have also uh, by adding district grant we are letting the district know that this is the grant amount which we are uh, looking for so once we have done this uh, we basically have completed the application process that is all what is involved uh, 
And having done this, you can, if you want to uh, see what you have filled in here, you can go under this heading project overview. Just click on project overview. So this will be a summary of what we have done so far. Uh, project overview, this general description, I said distribute dictionaries, uh, community assessment will help improve reading skills. So this is a broad summary. Then we added the expense item, we added the income item. So on under this thing, under on this page, by clicking the project description, you are able to see uh, the whole summary of the project. And you can just see that everything is in order. And um, now one thing here, what happened was that when I applied for my own club, uh, actually on behalf of the district, I had to click this request more information, which would have sent the message to you to complete the application. I didn't do the process that at that time, so I'm now doing it. Uh, I'm just so that, okay. So I just am sending that. That's not something which you need to do. This is uh, would have been done by the district earlier. Uh, now, when you have completed your application and you go to the top, you will see uh, on the right-hand top side, this box and this box says provide information. So you click on that, provide information, a, another dialog box opens up and here under the comments, you can simply say, uh, sorry, submitting final application, and budget and just click on send and that's it once you say send the district will get this your final application and you will get a message on your email uh, that your application has been received and if you do not hear anything further from the district you do not need to take any more action and district will come back to you in August as to the approval of, of your application, nothing else required from your side. However, if something is, is still missing in your application, uh, then when I review it, I would still then come back to you and say, hey, you have completed all this portion, but this is still missing. And then I will again click on, on my side, request more information and you will get a message uh, uh, along with my comments that you have completed uh, this portion, uh, but this thing is not matching. Can you please make sure that this is done? And then you again resubmit that portion to me. So that completes basically once this is done, it completes the application process. Uh, shouldn't take more than uh, 10, 12 minutes for the whole application process for each club to complete. And um, then you wait until August to hear from us. Uh, so uh, then, then the next step in this is when you have completed your process, you will have to submit your final report. But we don't want to go through the final report portion today. Uh, don't need to confuse. If you have done this much, uh, submission of final report is pretty easy. Uh, uh, this is done by clicking on this individual project report uh, and then just following the same prompts. Um, but no need to go through it today. Uh, if required, we will do another webinar for uh, 15 minutes uh, just before the final reports start coming in. Uh, but I think at this stage, it is uh, more important to make sure that everybody is comfortable with submitting the applications. Uh, so Barry, I think that uh, completes uh, my presentation and you can perhaps open up for uh, questions now. I give Thank it back you. to you. Thank you, Sharon. Um, um... An additional piece of information, in your control panel, one of the boxes in the control panel is called handouts. Uh, and there are two handouts that are available for you to download. You can download them directly uh, from during the webinar right now. One is the district application guide. 
it's pretty much everything that um, uh, Sharon has has talked about. It's just in printed form, so you have that. And there is also a copy of the PowerPoint presentation that Sharon used earlier. So those two things are available to you. Um, there's a question, will this webinar be posted on the District 74775 website? Every time we do a webinar in the district, they are always recorded and they will always be posted on the website someplace. So, and, and everyone who is uh, signed up for uh, this particular webinar gets an individual copy of the um, uh, webinar link. That's always automatic. Um, are there any other questions for anyone else that you'd like to type in the box? Uh, in fact, maybe I can even try and unmute us if, if um, we can. Let's see how that works. Well, maybe not. Uh, okay. Well, I was going to try. Uh, I think and it's muted, Barry. Yeah. If you if you have a if you would like to ask a question, you have to you can unmute yourself by clicking on your little microphone. But um, uh, at this point, uh, it looks like um, uh, there are no particular questions. So I think we're good to go. Uh, I want to thank you for uh, spending uh, 45 minutes with us tonight. Um, and I think the process looks pretty clear and straightforward. If as you go through this, you run into any additional questions or have any concerns, uh, please contact um, uh, Sharon. His, his information, uh, contact information is uh, in the, the district grant application documents. Uh, hearing no questions, oh, here's a question. If we have a project of more than $1,500, can we apply for $1,000 from the district? Sharon, that's a question for you. Hang on, Sharon. I, I've got you muted somehow. I'm trying to unmute you. Uh, Sharon, you have to unmute yourself by clicking on your little orange microphone. There you okay. go. We can hear you. We can hear okay. you now. Okay. All right. No, of course, uh, you can do a project uh, for any amount. Uh, the district grant will be limited to only thousand dollars maximum, uh, but certainly uh, you can do a project for five thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, whatever you wish, and raise uh, funds from other sources. Julie, I believe that answers your question. Anyone else with questions? Thank you, everyone. And again, thank you for uh, giving us a little bit of your time. I'm going to end the webinar for everyone at this point. And again, if you need additional information, contact um, Sharon or, or, or Michael Hart, the chair of the foundation. Good night, everyone. Okay. Thank you very, very much for organizing this seminar. Thank you very much. All righty. Take care. Bye-bye.